Florida Positive Behavior Support Project is pleased that you are interested in learning more about school-wide positive behavior support, commonly referred to as PBS. We are grant funded through the Florida Department of Education's Bureau of Exceptional Education and Student Services with a mission to increase the capacity of Florida's school districts to address problem behavior using positive behavior support. We provide training, technical assistance, and resources to assist with implementation throughout the state. This presentation is intended to provide you with an overview of the PBS process and the impact it can have on your school. We hope that you will be excited about the positive impact that PBS can have on your students, staff, and the entire school. School-wide positive behavior support, PBS, involves the application of evidence-based strategies and systems to assist schools to decrease problem behavior, increase academic performance, increase safety, and establish positive school cultures. This is the second year of implementation of the Positive Behavior Support Program at Point Center High School. It's a new way of thinking for us in terms of you know, moving away from the traditional punitive reactionary approach to discipline and taking a more positive approach, particularly emphasizing the teaching element, helping kids to learn and, and teach what is appropriate behavior, what it looks like, what it sounds like in, in all different areas of school, and then reinforcing those for showing our pillars of excellence. What is PBS? Let's take a look at the most common features that define the PBS process. First, a school-wide PBS team that is representative of the school staff develops a plan and trains school staff to fully implement positive behavior support. The team regularly communicates with staff and actively seeks staff input in making decisions that will impact the school. Data are used to identify the areas to target for intervention and to determine whether the school-wide interventions are working to decrease problem behavior. Students are regularly taught the school-wide expectations and rules and given opportunities to practice desired behavior. School-wide incentives are used to reinforce students for following school-wide expectations. The goal is to shift the attention typically placed on students exhibiting problem behaviors to students exhibiting appropriate behavior. PBS is proactive and that's kind of one of my favorite phrases. I know I've talked to the student services team and administration and uh, really want to be proactive in everything and, and I know PBS is, is that. It's proactive. It's going ahead and recognizing things that are the, that you expect you know, we always spend a lot of time on the negative. I mean, let's face it, in life, you know, we, you know, we get all these compliments and one thing zings us and it's like you can't get out of your head. And so we need to really get away from that. We need to say, hey, you know, we're doing a good job and, and also say that to, to our customers, the kids. And we tend to always look at that one child or two, you know, that are not doing the right thing and we focus in on that. Why don't we focus on the kids that are doing the positive things, the expectations that we have of them? And that's what PBS is about. We tend to, the old adage is spend 95% on 5%. Is that, you ever hear that before? You know, and we do. That's in life. But we need to start looking at that 80, 85%. Unlike many other school incentives, school-wide PBS is not a packaged program with a predetermined script or schedule. Instead, PBS should be viewed as a process that should be constantly adapted to meet the changing needs of your school. It grows with your school, so it is always a good fit. It's not packaged. It's not somebody's box kit. It's not the circus that's coming through town and here you go, it's PBS time and it goes away. Everything that we introduce to each one of our schools lets the school drive what positive behavior support is for that school. It addresses that school's culture, that school's environment, who makes up the population at that school. And that's what I think makes it extremely special because no two PBS plans in any schools look the same. School-wide PBS is for whole schools, including all students, faculty, support staff, and parents. Implementing PBS in your school can help identify target areas that are in need of improvement, look at processes and procedures already in place that can be modified to promote a smarter working environment, decrease problem behaviors across campus, improve attendance, 
and increase the time spent on task, which will result in improved academic achievement when paired with good teaching and boost staff and student morale to improve overall school climate. The biggest thing that we like about this is that it's proactive, it's not reactive. We're really teaching the kids what we are expecting, why we're expecting that, and instead of reacting after something's happened, it's teaching the kids, it's being a proactive, it's positive, it's a reinforcement for the students for making the right choices. I think the process of, of positive behavior support implementation has to be looked at as a process. You know, year one, we had tremendous success with our discipline statistics. Year two, we changed some things. We've had some, some hiccups, some wrinkles, but we're constantly looking at our data, looking at what's happening, how our students change, how our teachers change, and what we can do not to throw out the system, but just to change the system so it continues to work. And to me, that's what's so effective about PBS. It's going to work in individual schools in individual ways, but the principles are research-based, especially for urban, urban schools and populations that need that positive culture for kids to respond. Kids don't want to work hard, don't want to learn from somebody that they don't think cares about them. And when we're using positive behavior support to teach kids good behaviors, it automatically establishes a positive relationship between the teacher and the student. And that's really important for helping to breed academic success. Although PBS may look different from school to school, the presence of certain elements or components identify if the school is actually a PBS school. Here you will see examples of these elements in action. People often ask, what is the key to success with this particular support system? And I would have to say that at our school, it has been the staff involvement. Our teachers have shown tremendous leadership, starting with our core team that works with all of the staff, but the teachers and the support staff in the classrooms and throughout the school are the ones that are making it work. They teach the four expectations to all of our students and our students can repeat them to you. But it isn't just classroom teachers, it's everyone. It's not unusual to see our custodian complimenting a class as they go through the hall, our cafeteria workers as the students go through the lines, and many of our bus drivers also use our bobcat bucks to help reinforce positive choices with students. Today we're going to ask for your feedback. I have a six question survey that um, I will be putting in your mailboxes, so I'm going to ask you to fill that out. If you look at this, we have an informal assessment of physical aggression that's been going on in the school. And what I'm asking you to do is if you've seen physical aggression, you're going to use the three colors. That's blue, yellow, and red. And so you'll find the appropriate color. And for red, we're going to say, that a red is a real fight, it's a real big deal, and someone is hurt. The yellow dot, if it was still a fight, or still called a peer conflict, but it was not as serious, but the kids were definitely angry. And then the blue is the cool fight, where it's like horse play, goofing around, being silly, but ca could cause an accident. First thing I want to share is the average referrals per day per month. This is probably the most um, helpful of the Swiss charts that can come back from all the discipline data. See, we had some spikes periods uh, because of transportation last year. First period was one of those periods that sometimes we got a lot of referrals, kids sleeping, and some of the teachers didn't want the kids to sleep in the class. Also, one of the spike times, guess what, when it was? Wow. Oh, y'all veterans, y'all know. After lunch is a definitely a, a tough time. So those are the areas that we wanted to present to the staff as something that we might want to look at. Uh, when you're bringing your class back to lunch, what about doing some activities instead of going in the lecture to kind of get them up, where, you know, instead of going to sleep. And those are the type of things that we really wanted to look at. You look at the, your packet, you'll see that I have it for those two weeks. So you can kind of just see at a glance that um, for that first quarter, uh, disrespect was, uh, was the main problem. Um, we go to second quarter, which was the worst quarter by far. Boy, Tardy really took over. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you can make up some kind of a letter to these kids that have been successful. Have them signed by, say, Mr. Schaefer that the program that whatever you want to call it, this thing we're doing to pull out 
has really been successful with you in, in a letter, a regular letter from the principal, to, you know, signed by him. And we'd love, we encourage you to uh, come back next year and maybe uh, we'll continue and, or something of that nature. I think it'd be kind of nice to put something in their hands and they feel well. Or would you even consider a certificate? Oh, yeah. Or sure. an opportunity to mentor by the time they're a senior, a freshman right. comes in yeah. and doesn't think there's anything there. Do you know what I mean? Well, we learned about them, like, because Miss Pace, she always, like, goes over them, you know, in the morning on the PA system. She's like, all right, have respect today for the students, you know, have loyalty to do, to do what is right. And they always, like, teach us to us during class, like, by giving us, like, giving them to us and by teaching us sort of, like, day-to-day -day things. The four pillars of excellence mean that courage, like, the courage to do what is right. Tolerance is to have tolerance of other people, even if they're, like, behaving bad, like, you know, to have tolerance, you know, to stand by them and not say anything bad. Respect is to respect others, like, you know, like the golden rule, to respect others that they will do unto you. And loyalty is to have loyalty to, like, if somebody has loyalty to tell you something, don't go around spreading rumors. And what we ended up doing was we let our video production class do the lessons. And it would come over the Westwood News, and uh, they would model, here's the right way to show respect, Here's the wrong way to show respect, and they, they would role play it. It would come over the whole system, so the whole school got to see their fellow students do the lesson. Mm -hmm. And we found that was that was pretty. Follow yeah. through. Who's got the next one? Go ahead. On task. On task. How are you on task out here in this unusual classroom? You always follow directions. Okay. You're dribbling that ball, right? Jumping that rope, whatever he asks you to do. And the final one. Who's got the final one? Read it for us. Respect others. Respect others. How do you respect others? You respect college when I'm Yes. You show him what? Show respect. Respect. I have some helpers up here. They're going to show me what safety first looks like on the bus and an example of, of something that we shouldn't be doing on the bus that we need to change. Okay, let's look how Jonathan is standing. This is my pretend bus, and we have seats on one side and the other. So Jonathan, kind of put your feet out. Now, if I'm getting on the bus, what's going to happen if his feet are on the, on the aisle? I'll trip, and I could hurt myself. So Jonathan, show me what safety first looks like with sitting in the seat. Excellent job. His feet are out in front of him, his hands are, are in his lap, and if he had a backpack on, it would be right on his back. So I'm going to give Jonathan a C dollar because I like the way he was sitting. I need your help on this. I'm going to read the expectation, and you're going to read the rule, okay? Eyes on the frame over there. S is for safety first. Now you read the rule. How do you show that? Read it together. A, always responsible. Eat your food on your Those are our expectations and one rule to make those expectations happen. What happens when you meet those expectations or what could happen? Yes. You'll earn a sailor sea dollar. Thank you for listening. Then we talk about tolerance. Like I said earlier, you've got people here from everywhere. You've got people here with lots of different beliefs and thoughts and feelings, but that's okay because we can learn to have tolerance. People are different, doesn't mean it's bad, just means it's different. And you might actually learn something from being around somebody who's different from you.
So the kids know up front, I have a choice to make. Is, 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 and if I choose this particular action, this is going to be the consequence. But we also want kids to know, and this is why positive behavior support became so important to me, is that you can also choose actions that will bring positive consequences. We had one incident this year, and, and, I, and you know, I just love to brag on the teachers, because we had one incident where the student was, was willing to just about do anything to get out of the classroom, banging on the walls, banging on the table, we just kept putting that kid back in the classroom, and the teachers were the ones that were determined to win with this student. Um, you know, I'd go, i say, listen, guys, if you need a break, let me know, and I'll pull that student out for a while. No, we're not going to do that. He is not going to win. He's going to stay in this classroom, and he's going to learn how to behave in here. And so it was funny. At the end of the week, one of the, students, one of the other students brought their teacher Tylenol. <laughs> because he was screaming. You know, he was carrying on and just going nuts. And what, what the teachers had done, though, was they had trained the other students in the class to ignore, to focus, realize their responsibility in the classroom, and within a couple of weeks, those behaviors de-escalated. And at the end of the year, you know, we had our, our bowling party for the students that got 3.5 and above on the writing, and he's there, you know? So he turned out to have a very successful year. Um, in the past, what we probably would have done is office referral after office referral, incorrigibility, alternative school. But with PBS and with our change of thinking, we dealt with that completely differently. And now we have a student that's successful in the classroom. I earned my Soaring Eagle coupons by behaving, respect, wearing my pride shirt, um, you know, behaving in class, being quiet, being nice, polite, basically all those things that everybody should do. I feel when I earn a Soaring Eagle coupon, I feel good about myself. I feel confident. I feel right. I'm doing something right. I'm doing something right for everybody else. And I'm setting a good example for everybody else to do it also. Well, the Soaring Eagle coupons, they like, they little pieces of paper that you get, like, doing doing good in class, doing your work and all that stuff. So when what they do is like on Fridays when we have our little pride days, whatever we wear shirts and at lunch we give us we get posters and popcorn and little treats like that, you know, to keep us motivated. I have data on a positive incentives um, from my teachers that I passed out a survey on positive behavior support. Uh, we do peer awards, we do star student of the week, we do principals parties, picnic with the principal honor and effort awards, silver spoon awards in our cafeteria, and we do staff yes awards. And the overwhelming feedback from the teachers have been positive. And their comments, of course, are related to the students. Students love this. Students think this is great. They love, um, they love having lunch with the administration. They really enjoy the picnic with the principal. The peer awards, um, they like that because it's an award that's given to um, it's positive reinforcement to any student in the school, just kind of a caught you being good award, um, and they, they enjoy that. Po positive feedback, we do um, a star student, student of the week, a star student, which means a student is recognized each week from each classroom. Parents are invited to come have breakfast with them, so every student in the school will have been recognized by the end of the year at least one time. Look at this huge bundle of tickets. You all saved $50 the month of February for your sailor expectations. And I want to tell you, I am so proud of you. That means you are doing everything that you're supposed to for your model students, for the other students in your class. Students should be randomly reinforced for following school-wide expectations. Each school's reward system is designed according to the needs of the specific student population and should be varied to maintain interest. Boys and girls, we're here today to do our drawing and you've been working hard all of this week and all of the week before spring break to earn some blue shining star cards to put in our can. What are some things that you guys did to get these blue cards? Malachi? This 
graph shows that schools implementing school-wide PBS often see decreases in office discipline referrals. In fact, those schools scoring 70% or higher on yearly evaluations of school-wide implementation experience a much greater decrease in office discipline referrals, averaging a decrease of approximately 20%. Of course, not all outcomes of PBS can be measured in a graph. What changes have we seen on our campus from positive behavior support, a sense of hope, a sense of unity, uh, that we're all working off the same expectations, uh, a better sense of collaboration. Uh, discipline referrals, referrals, we set a goal of reducing by 50%. We went down 72%. So from 2100, oh, it's great. From 2100, we went down to 500. And our goal for this next year is to reduce that by a further 10%. And, um, and I am very confident we're going to be able to do that. Our, our achievement data on the FCAT, we went from being a D, we're three points from a B. So we went, uh, <laughs> well, it, you know, it's, it's the teachers, it's having kids in the classroom, it's a different culture at the school. You're, I'm walking down the, the hallways and kids are saying good morning to me. We started PBS here at Point Siena High School two years ago. We're into our second full year. The summer before we started, um, we had a team that got together. We looked at the number of referrals that we had. We looked at our biggest issue, which was insubordination. Um, as a team, we came up with our four pillars of excellence and started with the respect. We thought that was the biggest issue at that time. The first year we reduced our discipline referrals by 50%. I feel that it's helping the school out, you know, it's stopping fights and, you know, it's getting a lot of students to think about their education instead of about what they're wearing and who's looking good today. In general, 80 to 90% of your student population will respond positively to school-wide PBS. However, some students will need additional support. Your data will assist you in identifying those students who are at risk and may be in need of more targeted interventions. Additionally, students not responding to either school-wide or targeted group interventions should be considered for individualized interventions and supports. Individualized support is usually required for 1 to 5 percent of your student population. Though immediate results are often achieved, the PBS process should be viewed as ongoing. It may take three to five years to implement all levels of PBS support. Schools interested in attending training to become a positive behavior support school must first have a commitment from their district, which begins with a PBS district action planning meeting facilitated by the Florida Positive Behavior Support Project. In addition, Schools and districts must complete the required checklist and provide necessary information to ensure they are committed and ready to begin the PBS process. What I like about Point Center High School, I like the teachers. Teachers is cool, they're pretty cool for the most part. Sometimes they get on your nerves and on that, but most for the most part, teachers are straight, I like them. What else? And uh, the girls. Let's celebrate.